the general DFS community had a low scoring week 10 as many of those chalk plays were a big disappointment. This yielded surprising results. We'll discuss them and get you ready for week 11 on FanDuel with a full cash and GPP lineup all coming up next. Hello, everyone. This is Eric Lee with the Fantasy Football Consultants. What a strange week 10 it was with all that crazy weather. Because of that crazy weather, if you watch the YouTube comments late Saturday night, I switched off Devontae Adams, Duke Johnson, and the Carolina D to Stefan Diggs, Robert Woods, and the Las Vegas D. And then Sunday, shortly before kickoff, about an hour before, I started to have second thoughts. I knew that Devontae Adams and Johnson would catch short passes, and maybe that wouldn't be as effective in the win, and they actually would be featured, and I switched back. And of course, that lineup did not do as well. That scored only 108. The lineup that I pivoted off to scored 129, finished seventh out of 100 people in that 50-50 contest. But here's the surprise. The chalk did so bad that in my 50-50 uh, contest, the 108 that I scored still cashed, finished 38 out of 100. And I checked another 50-50, that other one that I did, 108 would have cashed there too. So I don't know if I just got lucky in those two 50-50 or not, but that's what happened uh, with me. Let's talk about what happened with you guys, the community, when you guys gave us our, your opinions of who would do well. Um, and congratulations for qualifying Solomon D. Johnson and Rocky Patel. So we are in the last week uh, to qualify to win uh, a contest that you can win $100. So that'll begin in a couple weeks, but this week is the last chance to qualify. How do you qualify? It's easy. Enter into the YouTube comments of this video. Three things. One, name the player that's on the main slate using FanDuel scoring who you think will do the best given their FanDuel price. Two, tell us why. I need a reason why and make it good for why you think uh, that person is going to go off. And then finally, three, give us your fan dual username. All right. It's been a while since I've done this. Uh, Bill calls. Gather around, everyone. Well, let's see what's in the mail. What's this? A letter. Dear Bill, I'm calling to report that you Let's open up the mailbag. And Dave Lejeski wrote me and said, absolutely love your videos as a part of my DFS week. He says, good picks sometimes, bad picks sometimes. Great videos with a lot of enthusiasm every week, man. Well, thanks so much, Dave. Really appreciate uh, your comment. And I truly appreciate whether I'm getting the picks right or wrong, I truly appreciate your guys' support and recognition of, of what I do. I do it for you guys, and I do it for this great community. So continue being a great community and get in those comments. Let us know your, uh, your opinions, not only of the show, but your takes on the main slate. Let's do Dave proud, get into the studio, and get to week 11. All right, everybody, let's get started with our cash lineup, and we like to start at running back. Quick story for you. A lot of guys can uh, relate to this story. You're about to get married. You take a trip to the jeweler. You know exactly the ring that you want to get, and the jeweler quotes you some outrageous price, but it doesn't matter how expensive it is. You can't afford not to get that ring because that's the ring you want. And the ring we're talking about here is Dalvin Cook. I know it's painful, 10,500. And FanDuel, in a very obnoxious way, may say, well, if you can't afford Dalvin Cook, maybe there's a running back that is more in your price range. Can we offer you a Derrick Henry or an Aaron Jones? And what's the answer? No, I don't want Derrick Henry or Aaron Jones. I want Dalvin Cook. Let's wrap them up. Put him in my cart. Dalvin Cook is in our lineup. Why do we need Dalvin Cook so badly this week? Well, look, folks, just look at two of the last three weeks. The guy has gotten 30 carries, 32 and 34 touches. He's been sensational. 
everything that you would want in a running back, Dalvin Cook gives you this week. Home, big favorite, eight-point favorite, uh, a ridiculously high implied total. He goes up against a, a Dallas defense that is awful against the, the rush. He's going to be the goal line back. He's going to be involved in the passing game. We're just going to have to suck it up, folks, and make it work. All right, where do we go from here after we get Dalvin Cook? Well, uh, I suggest we, we start figuring out ways to save money, but we don't want to sacrifice in talent. And we'll start, we'll, we'll, let's line right Dalvin Cook right up alongside a much cheaper back at only $5,800. He gives us a lot of the things, obviously at a lower scale, that we want that Dalvin Cook gives us. We love that Kalen Balaj uh, is now the featured back, the goal line back. He does get involved in the passing game. Uh, he's taken over, folks. He is the featured back. Austin Eckler is not going to return until next week. Justin Jackson is hurt. This is the guy. Last week, you see he had 23 touches. And this week, he just has a dream matchup against the worst team in football, the New York Jets. So from a game script perspective, being at home and being an eight and a half point favorite, they should be ahead. They should be uh, relying on him in this so-called revenge game for Kalen Balaj. All factors are pointing to this is the guy I want. And mostly because only $5,800, I got to. I got to make up for that huge spin on Dalvin Cook. All right, after those two backs that I have, it's time to go wide receiver hunting. And what are we looking for? Wide receivers who get a lot of targets in great matchups this week. So we're going to start right at the top. Thrilled to get this guy in our lineup at $7,300. Terry McLaren. The guy is simply a target monster. But here's the difference. What is different about the last two weeks? Look at the catch percentage. Seven of nine, seven of eight. That's the change to Alex Smith. So um, if we can just get those targets a little farther bumped up, I know Alex Smith likes to dump it off to his running backs. But I love the fact that he is always looking uh, to Terry McLaren as well. And against the Cincinnati Bengals, I think there's going to be plenty of opportunity to expose that poor defense. So Terry McLaren, welcome to our lineup. All right, still looking for wide receivers with a lot of targets. And you know what? <laughs> it's basically pick your Pittsburgh wide receiver here on Fandle. Because if you look at the Pittsburgh wide receivers, they're all about the same price. All with $100. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, Chase Claypool, and Deontay Johnson. I'm going to go with Deontay Johnson. You might not agree. In fact, I wouldn't have mind it with Juju Smith-Schuster uh, to diversify my portfolio because I always go with Deontay Johnson. But uh, I actually need that $100. And I like Deontay Johnson better than Chris K uh, Claypool. If you don't, swap out Johnson and put in Christian, uh, put in Chase uh, Claypool. But you've got to like the fact that these triplet of wide receivers are going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, in Jacksonville, I just hope that Jacksonville can keep this a game for a little bit of time <laughs> uh, so that uh, Pittsburgh still continues to pass. But uh, make no mistake, Jacksonville's pass defense is not good. They've given up uh, an average of 30 points a game this year. Deontay Johnson, when he has stayed healthy, has always been someone who has gobbled up uh, the target. Only one game this year in which he didn't get hurt at the very beginning of the game that he did not get double digit targets. So double digit targets against Jacksonville, man, that's a very high floor 
for Deontay Johnson. So we'll get him in our lineup. The last guy, wide receiver, who I believe will give us plenty of targets this week, is really the only key wide receiver on the Patriots, Jacoby Myers. And he is uh, $6,000. All right. Let me just be clear. The Julian Edelman era is over. Um, it ended right uh, around after the San Francisco game. So Julian Edelman is hurt. Now Jacoby Myers is clearly being featured as the number one wide receiver, 10, 14, seven targets. Now he faces uh, a defense that is far easier than, uh, than, than Baltimore. He faces the Houston Texans who have really struggled really heavily against the run, but also against the pass. I think that the Houston offense is going to score enough to force Cam Newton to do to something in the air, and it's going to be going to uh, Jacoby Myers. All right. Where do we want to go from here? After those picks, we're going to do something where I think FanDuel, quite honestly, made a mistake. And when FanDuel makes a mistake, what are we going to do? If you can take advantage of a situation in some way, it's your duty as an American to do it. Yeah, we're going to take advantage of the, the, the situation. We're going to potentially include in our cash game lineup at $4,500. Taysom Hill. Now you go, wait a minute. Taysom Hill is not a tight end. You're right. He isn't a tight end. He's a quarterback. So here's the question that we need to know. If I am scrolling over, Drew Brees is out. Let's be clear of that. He's not playing. So the question is, is Jameis Winston going to be the starter? We don't know. As it says here, it's a two-man race between Winston and Taysom Hill with both uh, quarterbacks uh, handling first team reps in practice. If Taysom Hill is named the quarterback, I can't tell you how quickly we have to put in Taysom Hill as our tight end. To get a quarterback in the tight end spot, that's amazing. I, for now, in this first look lineup, I am not going to rely on that because I do think they are going to get uh, to probably use um, Winston. But GPP, I can't afford to pass that up. Why? Because I think there's a huge upside. Even if they name Winston the starter, I think there's a, a good chance that Taysom Hill is going to get involved as the quarterback, either as a change of pace or if Winston struggles. And it, he immediately has a tremendous ceiling. For now, Cash, not knowing who's going to be the starting quarterback, I am going to go at, uh, actually more expensive at tight end, Hayden Hurst. Hayden Hurst, why is Hayden Hurst behind uh, people like Jared Cook and TJ Hawkinson and Dallas Goddard and Johnu Smith and Noah Fant and Robert Tunyon? Why? I don't know why, um, because FanDuel's nuts is why. Um, Hayden Hurst has a great matchup this week. First of all, what has Hayden Hurst done this year? All he does is get targets, eight targets, seven targets, seven targets, very consistent. Now that he has developed as a part of that Atlanta Falcons offense, and I love his matchup this week, playing in the Dome. The Dome not at home, but in New Orleans. How do you attack New Orleans? Not on the ground. They're very good against the rush. You attack them in the air, and hopefully you avoid Marshawn Latimer. There's no way Marshawn Latimer is on Hayden Hurst. Um, so I think this is a great matchup. Throwing the fact uh, that Calvin Ridley is uh, hobbled, I'm not sure if he's going to play. I really like Hayden Hurst as, a, as an option this week. All right, before we get to quarterback, let's fill out our flex. The flex running back we're going to get, I always like when a running back last name describes the player. 
DeAndre Swift. This guy is swift. He is very explosive coming out of the backfield. Let me ask you guys a question. Why did it take it this long for head coach Matt Patricia of the Lions to figure out a young, explosive running back is the guy that should head the running back core rather than some old, ancient, slow running back named Adrian Peterson, who I think medically is required to bring his cane on to the field. He's old. All right. Um, rather than question it, let's just accept the reality. It's a new era in Detroit Lions running back. It is DeAndre Swift. He had 21 touches last week. Adrian Peterson and last year's starter, Carrion Johnson, combined only six touches, 21 to six. This is Swift's backfield, and I love the matchup. He faces the Carolina Panthers, who can absolutely be exposed on the ground. And you know what? I got news for you folks. Detroit may not have a choice, but rely a little bit on their, uh, rely, rely heavily in their passing game. Their quarterback, Matthew Stafford, is questionable. Their wide receivers, Kenny Galladay, who hasn't played for several weeks, Marvin Jones, and Danny Amendola are questionable. Even their tight end, TJ Hawkinson, are, are, is questionable. Now, that's five guys, five key guys to their passing attack. You know, let's say two of them, two of them don't play. There's, that really hurts their passing game. I think not only will they rely more on Swift in the ground game, but Swift can get even more involved in the passing game. All right, let's go to quarterback, folks. Basically, here's my analysis on quarterbacks week after week. Don't think about it. Don't worry about it, especially on FanDuel, where they price up a lot of the cheap running uh, quarterbacks. Just put Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray is this year's Lamar Jackson. The guy is incredible, not only in the air, but he's just incredible on the ground, averaging more than one rushing touchdown a game. Here's the problem. Kyler Murray is not on the main slate this week. So he's not an option. So if I can't get last year's Lamar Jackson, I'll settle for this year's Lamar Jackson in an excellent matchup at home against the Tennessee Titans. So Lamar Jackson has a 27 and a half implied total. So Baltimore is expected to put points on the board and you figure it one way or the other, it's likely to come from Lamar Jackson. Look at the last three weeks. 16 carries, 13 carries, 11 carries. That's what we want to see out of Lamar Jackson. And if you're frustrated because you say, Eric, look at the fantasy points, 16, 18, 22. That's not what I want to see. Well, keep in mind, look how tough those last three teams have been against quarterbacks. The first ranked defense, the second ranked defense, and the third ranked defense against quarterbacks. Real tough. Now he faces a uh, Tennessee uh, Titan team that is a lot easier on quarterbacks. Actually, thir uh, 25th ranked versus uh, quarterbacks. So we're happy uh, with Lamar Jackson in our lineup. Last position is defense at $3,200. There's not a lot of defenses that we can afford, ladies and gentlemen when we scroll down. And I don't know about you, if you're thinking, uh, no, uh, <laughs> and I am not picking the Jets, but I will pick the Falcons, the, the Atlanta Falcons. Let's make no mistake here. This is a punt defense. I'm not expecting them to do tremendously well, but keep this in mind. Their price was dictated when they thought Drew Brees was gonna be the quarterback. Drew Brees is out. Probably the quarterback is going to be Jameis Winston. Look, Jameis Winston is a good quarterback, but he can be a turnover machine. A mistake here by here or there by uh, Jameis Winston could very well turn into a pick six going the other way. So um, 
That's my lineup. Lamar Jackson, Dalvin Cook, Kalen Balaj, Terry McLaurin, Deontay Johnson, and Jacoby Myers, Hayden Hurst as a tight end with a clear eye to see what's going on with the quarterback situation in New Orleans. DeAndre Swift in the flex. Um, I'm actually just noticing right now uh, that DeAndre Swift plays at one o'clock. So I don't want to get slammed in the comment section. So if I do a quick change here, slide, uh, let's slide um, DeAndre Swift as one of the main running backs. And let's put my superstar, uh, Dalvin Cook, in the, the flex position. That'll make everybody happy and be better sound uh, lineup construction. If you guys don't know, real quick, you if you're going to have three running backs, for example, put a guy playing at 4 o'clock, I could have put Balage in the flex position. That means if there's something that happens late to uh, Balage or Cook, I can not only pivot and move that particular player into the flex if I have one of them in the flex, but I can then choose any player, any running back, any wide receiver, or any tight end, even a tight end that's masquerading as a, uh, a quarterback. I can, I can make that switch. So it just gives you more flexibility. All right, now let's talk GPP. I think I forgot to mention at the beginning that our GPP lineup scored 101 points, which wasn't good enough at all. Uh, but that's going to happen in GPP. When you have a lot of correlation, you're going to often have big weeks, and then a lot of times you'll have bad weeks. Let's hope this is a big week. We're going to start with a stack, the Pittsburgh-Jacksonville. We want to attack this game because it's even though it's only a 46 and a half over under, Pittsburgh has an implied total of 28. That's pretty good. And if Jacksonville, who's playing at home, could just keep this game somewhat competitive, I think Ben Roethlisberger could easily have three or four touchdowns. He threw four touchdowns just last week. And then you get your choice. Pick two of the three Pittsburgh wide receivers. On FanDuel, they're all the same price, uh, whether it's Claypool, Johnson, or Smith-Schuster. I chose Juju Smith-Schuster and Deontay Johnson, but pick the two that you like the most. And then we ran it back with Jacksonville's best wide receiver in DJ uh, Shark. Um, the uh, already the other thing that we did is we really like doing the running back defense stack when we think that the running backs team and that defense is going to dominate that game. Minnesota is an eight point favorite, and I think they're going to beat up on Dallas. And if that is the game script, you should get more and more of Dalvin Cook, and you should get a Minnesota defense that's in a situation that they know that Dallas is going to pass. And Andy Dalton in that situation is definitely prone to some mistakes and some sacks. Could be a big game for Cook and the Minnesota defense. I already talked about uh, Terry McLaren and the trick that we're doing with Taysom Hill. The only other player here that I haven't talked about is Naeem Hines. And I'm going to click on him. So um, I know some people are like, Naeem Hines? So crazy someplace else. We're all stocked up here. Come on, Eric. Isn't it a three-headed monster down there with Jordan Wilkins and Jonathan Taylor? Naeem Hines, who knows who the big uh, the, the back is going to be? Well, that's why I didn't want to use Naeem Hines in my cash lineup, but I think his ceiling is sky high in this game. Why? I think this is going to be a major shootout. This is the highest scoring game on uh, the main slate, Green Bay versus Indianapolis. And I think Green Bay is actually going to win. And if the Colts are behind, uh, Naeem Hines is only going to be in the game more. And last week, he took over. Now, will that continue this week? It's not clear, but he had by far the most carries, 12 to the other guys, four and five. And he always gets, back, gets involved in the, pa the passing game. And I cannot tell you how much <laughs> Philip Rivers loves dumping short passes off to his running back. So Naeem Hines is in my GPP lineup. 
So that's it. You can see it on the screen. That's my full GPP lineup. Some exciting news that I think is going to happen next week. Uh, be sure to tune in. I don't think like this week I was all alone. I think I'm going to be joined in Thanksgiving week um, with a special uh, guest on the, the FanDuel show. So be sure to tune in for that. Until then, take care, be safe, and we'll see you next time.